If you have your Bibles, Exodus chapter 21, 1 through 6. I'm going to read a few scriptures, so when I, when I get done with Exodus, I'll let you be seated and I'll read the rest. Now that I am a senior, I understand that we need to sit down every once in a while. Exodus 21, 1 through 6. Now these are the judgments which thou set, shall set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master hath given him a wife, and she hath borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges, shall also bring him to the door or unto the door post, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. You can be seated. Let me read a couple of more scriptures to you. It shall be if he, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 16 and 17, and it shall be if he say unto thee, I will not go away from thee because he loveth thee and thine house, because he is well with thee, then thou shalt take an awl and thrust it through his ear unto the door, and he shall be thy servant forever, and also unto thy maidservant thou shalt do likewise. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 22 and 23, it says, for he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's freeman. Likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Ye are brought with a price. Be ye not servants of men. And then 1 Corinthians seven twenty-two and 23 in the New Living says this. And remember, if you were a slave when the Lord called you, the Lord has now set you free from the awful power of sin. And if you were free when the Lord called you, you are now a slave of Christ. God purchased you at a high price. Don't be enslaved by the world. And finally, 2 Corinthians 2.14, in the King James, Now thanks be unto God which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. The Amplified takes that scripture and said, lead us as trophies of Christ's victory. And the New Living says, who made us his captives and leads us along in Christ's triumphal procession. Now, I wish I could say that I have this whole thought to myself, but in Anderson, South Carolina, we're just down the road from Bob Jones University, and we are surrounded by Baptists. They are everywhere. And I got this thought from a Baptist guy. So I thought, it's a great thought, but it needs some apostolic flavor. So I just took it. <laughs> And, and I want to talk to you on this subject, triumphant slaves of God, triumphant slaves of God. Most of us have an adverse reaction to the term slave. We automatically think of the evil system by which slavery has been used in the past, and there's not a one of us in here that are comfortable with that. And that's not what we're going to be talking about tonight. In the Bible, when a Hebrew slave situation comes up, it's very different. First of all, you only become a slave if you owed a debt you could not pay or you were caught in the act of thievery. In the case of debt, you were only required to be a slave as long as it took to pay off your debt or after six years of service, you were set free. The only exception would be given in Exodus and Deuteronomy. Those slaves who fell in love with their masters could choose 
to remain in the service of the master for the rest of their lives and become what is called love slaves. Now, in the same way, when we came to God, most of us were in trouble. The majority of us did not come to church because things were going great. We usually walked through the doors of the church when things were not going very well. We were in trouble. We were in difficulty. I've even seen those who were facing prison in all of these things. But they came to the house of the Lord in their difficulties. Amen. And they had a debt that they owed to this world, to God, and they did not know how to pay it. And in desperation, they turned to Christ as their redeemer. And he allowed himself, because of love, to be nailed to that cross, which then becomes the door to our freedom because of his letting himself be nailed. You may serve the Lord out of a feeling of debt and maybe even fear. The year, several years ago, we used to have preachers going around preaching end time stuff, scared people to death. And the f altars were flooded as people said, oh man, the Lord's coming, the Lord's coming. And, and I'm, I'm just going to ask you a question. Where are those crowds today? Okay. Because if you serve the Lord out of a feeling of debt or a feeling of fear, it will not last a long time. You will eventually fall by the wayside. But oh, if you realize that you have never, ever served a kinder, more merciful master, and it allowed, you allow him to win your heart, hallelujah, and suddenly one day you realize that you don't have to serve him because of a debt, you don't serve him because of fear, but you serve him because you have fallen in love with him. I want you to understand everything that there is about living for God, unless you fall in love, unless it gets in your heart, if you just do it because we tell you to do it, if you just live that way because we tell you to live that way, it won't last very long. But if it gets down here in this heart, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. When you fall in love with the master, you are willing to do anything and everything for him. Hallelujah. And oh, the joys of serving as a love slave. And there's more to this than just that. 2 Corinthians 2.14 gives us an insight. It says, leads us along in Christ's triumphant procession. That phrase is from one Greek word, thriambuyo. Now, you don't know if I pronounced that right anyway. So it was right. That, that word referred to a custom that was common among the Roman armies of that day. And so when Paul wrote that word, the Corinthians knew exactly what he was referring to. But we through time have lost its meaning. When a Roman army had won a victory, they dispatched a herald, a runner, to return to Rome and run through the streets announcing that the victory had been won. <laughs> that word herald comes to us as the word preach. And that's what preaching is. We are running ahead of our conquering hero and we are announcing the victory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I... I don't ever look at a preacher again in the same way. He's not up here just preaching and just saying words to try to make you shout and dance and run and do all of that. He is up here announcing that he, there is a victory that has taken place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
You see, what's happened in this place, as far as I can feel in the spirit, is that there has been a victory in this house. You, you haven't had all the victories you want, but you're fixing to get a lot of victories. I'm going to tell you that right now. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And when we worship God, anything can happen in worship. Somebody says, you tell me where God is. I'll give you his address. He inhabits the praises of his people. That's his address. That's where he's at. You want to find him? Start worshiping. You want him to come to you? Start worshiping. Oh, hallelujah. And I can say this because I've been here a while, because I have been in the position of superintendent and such. New Brunswick Atlantic District, let me say this as kind as I know how to say it. You have a rich heritage. You've got a great history. But you better not be living in your past. It's not time to live in the past. It's time to have victory in the present. It's time to look toward the future with excitement, exuberation, and realizing that revival is about to come. I am telling you in the Holy Ghost that there is a fresh move of the Spirit that's beginning to come into this region, and it's going to come into this church, and it's going to come into other churches. The power of the Holy Ghost is going to be unleashed. I was in Zealand this morning. They're getting ready to celebrate 94 years of existence. That's powerful. That's mighty. But I can't lean back on the 94 years. I'm ready for something to happen right now. Somebody says, and, and I, I, I've had some people say this, some of our rural churches in New Brunswick here. Oh, Brother Goddard, all the young people are moving away. They get old enough to get a job. They move to the cities. We've got them in, in uh, the Rock, Newfoundland. We, we've got them out west in, in B.C. and Alberta. We've lost our young people. What are we going to do? And I look around, and there's houses everywhere. Hello? I, I've been challenging churches everywhere I've been on this trip because it just gets under my skin when somebody begins to talk negative about what is going on in the church. We're fixing to have a move of God. While Summer Summit was going on, there was a shift in the spirit world. Hallelujah. I, I'm going to tell you that spiritual warfare is more of a reality than just life itself. This is what we're going through. But we're on the winning side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told, I told some of those churches, I said, when somebody in your community gets into difficulty or sickness or disease, where do they come to ask for prayer? They come to that apostolic church because they know that there's power in that church. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, my, 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 my. I am here to tell you, and I'm, got, I'm out of my notes, but I'll get back to them. Be patient. I got at least a good three hours in me. <laughs> no, I won't do that. But I, I told at Summer Summit, I talked about the miracle that took place that Brother Jack Cunningham talked about. A church out in California. And a guy walks into the office. After, I'm not going to go through the whole story because most of you were here. But a guy walked into the office on Monday after they had had this huge service. He was a businessman from their community. He has never darkened the door of their church. And he has not yet darkened the door of their church. But he came that day. And he looked at the pastor <laughs> And he said, rumor has it that your church is in trouble. 
Now, I got to thinking about that. How many of us preachers would be willing to look at this guy who is an atheist? He's an avowed atheist and tell him, yep, we're in trouble. Now, I don't want to do that. But this pastor did. And he's had some transition problems plus financial situations. And this man, this unbeliever, this atheist asked him, how much do you owe the bank? And the man said, two point whatever million. The man reached into his pocket, pulled out his checkbook, and wrote out the check and paid off the debt. Do you realize that that's the world giving their money to the church? Hallelujah. And if you think that's just not going to, that's going to be the end of it, I am declaring to you that there's some powerful things that are beginning to happen and the world is going to give the church money to do the work of God because we can raise money but we can't raise it all, Brother Woodward, so we got to have some help and the world is going to give it. Just, just two to three days ago, I got, I got a message on my emails and text messages and everything else, and I spent the day working on it as the superintendent. But in Anderson, Brother Drake has started a little work in Iva, South Carolina, and he found out that they had a church building. The city owned a church building that someone had just given to them because they had just dissipated and done, so they gave the church to the, to the city council. And they asked if they could rent it. So they let them have it for just utilities. They just pay the utilities and they can have church. And they've been having church. Well, the other day, Brother Drake was sitting down with the vice mayor. And he said, you know, I know where I might be able to get a $25,000 grant. Give to She's for Christ. He said, would you... Consider selling this building, which seats 100, has a fellowship hall that takes care of 70, and said, would you be willing to sell it for $25,000? And the man said, go get your grant. He found out Thursday that not only is it the church building, but there's nine acres of land with it for $25,000. Something is happening. Hallelujah. And Capital Community Church, I believe that we want to be right smack dab in the middle of it all. Hallelujah. I told this, but I'll tell it again because it's so exciting. Jack Cunningham got me in contact with a man by the name of Chad Connolly. Chad Connolly is the director of the faith outreach arm of the Republican National Committee. And he has made a friendship with Jack. Jack's taken him all around his district, let him speak in churches and such. He is a very, very good Baptist man. Just tremendous Baptist man. So Jack said, he lives in South Carolina, Brother Goddard. You need to get with him. So I did. We had lunch together. He brought a pollster with him and all this stuff. And we were all sitting there. And we, we spent two to three hours in a restaurant talking. And then Jack came to our camp and preached. And then he got a phone call. And it's Chad. He says, Jack, guess what happened to me? And Jack said, what? He says, I was visiting one of your churches. He said, I got that Holy Ghost. He said, I've been talking in tongues, and I got baptized in Jesus' name. I am telling you, there is something happening and occurring in our world. You may think that everything's falling apart. I say God's putting the pieces all together for an end-time revival like we have never experienced in our lives. I think it's about time that the church became excited about it and said, let's get a part of this. Let's have it. Let's worship. Let's praise God. Let's usher in the presence of the living God. So when a preacher comes and he heralds victory, victory, we need to get a hold of that with the man of God. When that conquering army was close to Rome, a particular incense 
was burned in their temples so that when the people breathed the air and smelled that particular incense was was not used for anything else when they began to smell that they knew it's celebration time it's parade time soon the procession appeared boy you know what I smell something hallelujah Hallelujah, Jesus. I've been in churches where there's been a cloud of God's glory hover and overshadow that congregation. I believe we're going to begin to see more of that. And when it comes, we're going to be able to breathe in our nostrils the breath of celebration, the breath of victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That that particular odor is in this house tonight. Hallelujah. There's somebody that may be sick in this place, but I am telling you that there is a precursor of the power of Almighty God, and there's healing in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter to the diseases that have walked into this place. Our God is greater than any disease or sickness. Hallelujah. He's in this house. You can ask actually feel it you can actually smell it you can actually know that the presence of God is in the house oh oh there's something powerful beginning to touch in this place faith is beginning to arise hallelujah 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 ha ha The commanding general in a gold-plated chariot was drawn by white horses. There were musicians. There were priests with censers, and there was others. And right behind the chariot were the officers of the defeated army, chained to the chariot, being taken to execution or slavery. So what was Paul saying when he mentions this illustration? There was a time when we, you and I, were at war with Christ. And Paul said, I was at war with Christ. But one day on the road to Damascus, Jesus Christ conquered me. And I yielded myself in unconditional surrender. And now I can say, and he said it several times in the epistles, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, now Paul is chained to the chariot of his master. Hallelujah. And as long as he stayed chained to the chariot, everywhere that Paul went, he was led by Christ in a triumphant procession. I have been conquered, he was saying, by Jesus Christ. I've chained myself to his chariot as his slave. But hear the good news, he was saying. I'm simply following along in the wake of his victory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you some sound advice. If you want to be a conqueror, you must first be conquered. If you want to be an overcomer, you must first be overcome. If you want to be a master, you first must be mastered. If you want to exercise authority, you must first submit yourself to authority. We can be slaves, triumphant slaves of the Lord, as long as we will stay chained to his chariot. How many of you know who Houdini was? There's a few. We have a generation gap here. 
Houdini specialized in getting out of situations, chains, all kinds of things, throw it in water, bound up, he would be loosed out of that. He, he was, you know what? We've got a bunch of spiritual Houdinis who are trying to get off of the chain that holds them to the chariot. You don't want to get off of that chariot, my friend. Hallelujah. I, I, I just want you to think about that. You need to stay chained to the chariot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Here's a different interpretation. Goddard chapter 3 verse 5. Thanks be to God who always, anytime, every time, all the time, leads me in triumph in Christ and every place, all places, my place, you name the place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me, let, let me just give you one. I'm sidetracking just once again. But a backslider gave me this thought. And I could name him and lots of you guys would know who it is. But they gave me this thought. They said, Brother Goddard, are you familiar with the term ROE? I said, yes, rules of engagement. He said, it's a military term. Yes. He said, when David met Goliath, they were allowing Goliath to set the terms. The rules of engagement. And he taunted Israel all those days because they were giving the rules of engagement. When David showed up, he said, what in the world is going on? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he would defy the armies of Israel and God Almighty. You know what he was really saying? Who allowed him to set the rules of engagement? I mean, think about it. The dude was big, no doubt about it. But the armor he had on was really, really heavy. He was on the other side. He wasn't down in the valley. You know why he wasn't down in the valley? If he got down in the valley, he couldn't get out. Way too much. So he's standing over there waiting for everybody to come to him. And David got a hold of it. And he said, you come to me with a sword and a spear. But I'm changing the rules of engagement because I come to you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's some folks in here that need to face off against the enemy and say, I'm going to tell you right now, no longer are we going to battle by your rules of engagement. We're going to battle by my rules of engagement. And we're going to put the name of the Lord out there. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And, and, and so you need to stay chained to the chariot. Now, it's not easy to stay chained to the chariot because none of us like being slaves, really. But as I said from the very beginning, if you fall in love with the master, it's all okay. You know, from what I just told you a few moments ago, we will triumph in Christ. We can come to this conclusion. There is no conceivable situation in life which God cannot give us victory. Hallelujah. And this next part just absolutely floors me. Because if you stay chained to his chariot... He's ahead of you. <laughs> and and I, I'm over here, and I'm chained to his chariot. And so I'm just pulled along. But every step I take, Brother Woodward, 
I'm stepping in the footsteps of my God. I am stepping in the steps of triumph and victory. Hallelujah. When you understand that, why would you want to get unchained from his chariot? I want to stay chained to the chariot. Hallelujah. Victory, victory, triumph, triumph, victory, victory, triumph, triumph, victory, victory, triumph, 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 triumph. Hallelujah. Whatever you're facing today, and I don't have to be a guy gifted with all of the gifts of the Spirit to figure this out. Just in a crowd this size, I know that there are people that are struggling with some junk and some stuff that has come into your life. I want you to understand that it's time to get yourself chained to the chariot because he's announcing a victory. He's announcing a triumphant parade and march. It's celebration time. It's celebration time. Oh, hallelujah. 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 <laughs> you know, it seems like such a simple thing. But when you're sitting out here in a pew, and, and the Holy Ghost begins to move on you. And, and remember how difficult it is to get up out of this pew and walk down to that altar. Hallelujah. It, it's, for some of us, it's been so long that we forgot how difficult that walk is. But if there's somebody in this place that you're sitting in a pew right now, and you're saying, I don't know if I can make that walk down to that altar. Would you put it into your mind that before you walk down, you chain yourself to his chariot so that every step coming down this aisle is not a chore, it's not agony, it's not difficult, it's not hard because you're following in the footsteps of Christ and he's leading you to a tremendous victory in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You just gotta keep coming. You just gotta keep chained to the chariot. It all comes down to one word. Submission. Submission to the chariot. I'll never forget several years ago when I was president of the Bible school as the superintendent, we hadn't made the big change over all that, the positions and such. And we had a student that got themselves into some difficulty. And I don't remember the name or anything about it. Just, just remember the situation. And I'll never forget, I am sitting in the office at the Bible school. And this guy comes into the office and I hold his life, basically, in my hands. And I said to him, if we could condense the Bible down to one word, I said it would be submission. And he looked at me and said, well, now I would have a different opinion. <laughs> Not real smart. <laughs> Man. And, and he, he commenced to give me about a five-minute speech. And I don't even remember what he said was the key word to bring it all down, but it wasn't submission. And so I, I do remember that I gave some kind of discipline to help him remember what, dis, what, what submission is all about. But when I preach like this, when I talk about this, that's really what it comes down to is I've got to submit myself to the chariot of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I don't, I, don't, I don't stand here today acting in any such way that would say that it's easy to do that. Every one of us have difficulty submitting ourselves 
to being chained to the chariot of the Lord and saying, as Paul said, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. That is not easy to say. But let me tell you, if you ever get that kind of a spirit in your life, God will use you mightily and marvelously in the Holy Ghost when we submit ourselves to Almighty God. I've talked about her, and if you're doing live streaming, just cut me off for a little bit because I don't know who's watching tonight. I, 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 I want you to understand something. I'm 68 years old. I get tired preaching now. <laughs> My wife says we're not old. She's just in a state of denial. She, she, we, we actually, neither one of us can remember stuff anymore. So I tell everybody, we can't even have a good argument. Because if she says, I told you, she's not really sure if she told me. And if I tell her, no, you didn't, I'm not really sure that she didn't tell me. So we finally just have to give up, quit. That's a sign of age, I think. But I have not necessarily given you something tonight that would make you shout or jump or dance. But I will tell you this, when you run around this church, you're being pulled by the chariot. When you dance around these altars, you're being pulled by the chariot. When you go out these doors and go to your job tomorrow, make sure you're chained to the chariot of the Lord because somebody's going to say, what's going on with you? There's something different about you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. There is a countenance change. I may have told you this before, but I pastored in Dawson Creek, 800 miles north of the border. 40 and 50 below zero, aren't you ready to go? No? Okay. What a privilege it is. And, and so we were in a town of about 13,000 up there. And we had the town drunk come to church. And he was, he was it was awful. He looked awful. And he came to the altar and he prayed. And he said, I want to get baptized in Jesus' name. So they took him to the baptistry. I was leading the service. They baptized him in Jesus' name. And in that church, there was a door on the platform on the left side that you walked out of the baptistry area. I had my back to that door. And I was just leading the people in worship, waiting for him to come out. And I, I literally saw it on the face of all the people, and I literally heard a gasp from the audience because he did walk out. And you would not believe it was the same person. That few moments in that baptistry being covered in the name of Jesus he walked out of that room. He looked 20 years younger. Oh. I'm going to come to a close. But I want you to understand... I think all of us are guilty of this. I am. Walking into our church buildings and not thinking a thing about the presence of God. How many times have I walked through the back doors of our assembly and just walked casually into church and started a conversation with somebody and not taking the time to stop and say, Lord, I'm in your house. I just want to give you some praise here before we go any further. We don't really do that. And, and, and I, I had this happen in St. John one time. 
And uh, I don't know if it was Kathy or who it was. Julie, one or the other, came to my office. I was working on something. They said, there's a man out here that wants to meet with you, talk to you about something. He was a businessman in the city. And I said, well, just let him sit in the sanctuary, and as soon as I'm done here, I'll go out there. Because it wasn't a scheduled appointment. It was about five or ten minutes, and I walked out into the sanctuary. He was sitting on the back row of the church. And when I came around, tears were streaming down his face. And I said, may I help you, sir? And he said, well, I came, whatever the business was about. But he said, sit in here, pastor. He said, I feel such a strong presence of the Lord in this place. No organ playing, no music, no singing, no audience, no preaching, an empty building. And he's feeling the presence of the Lord. I happened, had it happen to me in Dawson Creek. I had a man, his name was Alan. He took the garbage out for the church. He was uh, a bit of a, you know, just one of those kinds of people. And I had given him this job, and it was important to him. And he was working at a restaurant downtown. And in the guys at the restaurant, a father and a son, they said, we need some things to be picked up. Can we use your truck? And he said, yep, but I got to go by the church first. He said, well, that's okay. He said, well, I got to pick up the garbage. That's my job. And so they get in the truck with him. He drives up to the church, gets out, and he don't even say, would you like to see the church? He doesn't say anything like that. This, this was just Alan. And so Alan brings him in, leaves him on the landing. You come in the side door, there's a landing. One set of stairs goes up to the sanctuary. One goes down to the basement. He just left him there, went down to the basement to get the garbage. When he comes back, they're still standing on the landing, except they're both crying. And here's what the father said to the son. He said, son, do you feel what I feel? This is on a Monday, empty building. And the son said, if it's that prickly stuff going up and down my spine, he said, yeah. That's what I'm feeling. I ended up giving them a Bible study and baptizing both of them in the name of Jesus. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were Jewish. Hallelujah. Here's what I'm saying. If you're truly chained to the chariot, when you come through the doors of your church building, I'm going to urge you to stop just a moment and recognize the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Right now, in this place, the presence of the Lord is in this sanctuary right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Shabakatarabahaya. Roshatalabasatarabahaya. Harabasando Ramashotaliata Rabashatarabahaya. Hino Rabasita Ramalia Shotalabakatarabahaya. Hallelujah. We are a herald. We are announcing. We are announcing victory. We are announcing triumph in this house right now. In the power of the Holy Ghost, there are miracles that are going to occur in this assembly in the next couple of months that's going to astound you in the name of Jesus. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. I feel it in my spirit. I am not just up here talking, but I feel something in the Holy Ghost. There was something in the spiritual world that shifted for this area and the district, but I am telling you that something has shifted in the spirit world for this assembly right here, right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God has not placed you here for you to just be here, but he's placed you here to reach out to your community. He's placed you here to begin to see these views begin to fill up with people who are hungry for the touch of God. They've had themselves chained to this world. They've been caught by this world. They've had enough of it. They wanna be chained to the master who is kind and beautiful and full of mercy and full of grace who will forgive them and give them a salvation experience. They're tired of it. They want it. They're ready for it. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Shulala la makata raba shata raba haya. Nito raba sata raba raba shata laba kashata raba haya. Jesus. Shulala la makata raba shata raba haya. Let yourself be used to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Shulala la makata raba shata raba haya. Santa raba raba shata raba haya. If it's been a while since you talked in tongues, why don't you just start praying in the spirit right now? Hallelujah. 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 Something is beginning to happen right now. Hallelujah. Something just stepped into this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'll tell you what I want you to do. They tell me that there's two kinds of shout in the Old Testament. When the men shouted, it was the shout of war. When the women shouted, it was the shout of victory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In just a moment, I'm going to ask the men of this assembly to shout the shout of war. We're going to declare it in Jesus' name. But when they die down, ladies, I'm going to ask you to shout the shout of victory. And when the shout of victory takes place in this building, All over this sanctuary, begin to shout with the shout of triumph and victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you have been held bound by some situations for way too long. It's time to be set free. You're a slave to the wrong master. Hallelujah. We're going to be enslaved by the master Jesus Christ. I want us to worship him for a little bit. I want to have it the right spirit at the right time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus in your name. Pastor, Bishop, whatever they call you, am I okay for right now? Am I doing okay? All right, I want to do something. The reason some of you have not broken out 
is because that the enemy has just entrapped you into thinking that you're absolutely worthless. Given you such low self-esteem that you don't feel like you could ever be used of God. The devil is an absolute liar. Anybody see what that is? $20 bill? Okay. Have you ever felt like you were down and then somebody came along and stomped on you and made you feel like you were absolutely worthless and nothing? Has the enemy been talking to you and telling you that you can't do anything for the Lord because of your life being messed up? Somebody beat you up, somebody tore you down, somebody stomped on you and you say, that is an absolutely worthless $20 bill. You think that's worthless? Anybody that can get it, it's yours. That is the, go ahead, it's yours. You could have had it. Here's what I'm trying to say. There's still value. It's still a $20 bill. You are still a child of God. You are still a saint of God. You are still part of the royal family. I don't care how much you've been beat up. You have worth. You have worth. Somebody ought to stand up and say, devil, I'm tired of you whispering in my ear. I'm tired of you telling me I'm worthless. I am a child of God. I am ready to be used. I'm ready to be chained to God's chariot and follow in the triumphant procession. I just want to get out of the way in case something happens. Hallelujah. Men, are you ready? I don't want no puny shout. This is a shout of war. And I don't want just one shout. I want you to repeat yourself. You say, Brother Goddard, this is childish. No, it isn't. They did it back in the days of the Old Testament. And we're going to do it now. I just want to serve notice to the spirit world. I want to serve notice to the prince of Fredericton. We're fixing to bust up your little realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we can go in the Holy Ghost with this, I will tell you that you will never be the same again. Are you ready? Men, are you ready? On three. One, two, three.
Feel the Holy Ghost. Feel the Holy Ghost in this place right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the prince and power of the air. Satan himself. I declare war. I declare war like we have never declared war before. Hallelujah. 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 It is shaking. It is shaking. It is shaking right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. I know this is a little unorthodox, but I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Ladies, are you ready? We're going to give a shout of victory. We've declared war, but it's not just war. We've got to have some victories. Hallelujah. 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 I feel like there's a victory that's going to be carried from this place upon your shoulders into your nation. Hallelujah. All right, ladies, on the count of three, again, I don't want any timidity. I don't want just a little, I want a shout, a shout of victory. On the number three, one, two, three, ladies. That's it, that's it, that's it. I see victory, I see victory. Yes, hallelujah. You keep worshiping the Lord. You keep worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Keep shouting, ladies. As you shout, put your victory into action. Men, start putting that victory into action right now. Begin to shout unto the Lord. Woo! Something powerful is happening in this place right now. Yes, 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 yes. this right now hallelujah hallelujah somebody needs to start marching hallelujah a victory march a victory march a victory march hallelujah 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 that's it get out of those pews and begin to worship the lord yeah hallelujah Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Chain yourself to the chariot.
slave to the kingdom of God than free to that world because you're not really free in that world. It holds you bound. It holds you bound. Hallelujah. That's it. Come on. Come on. Call on the name of the Lord. Chain yourself to the chariot.